one song leads to the other when it comes to the lyrics and they're all based upon the previous uh, release as well but that was never the intention really it, it just happened when i started to write what's up everybody it's kv at ghostcultmag.com and we are once again joined by pear wilberg how are you doing today pretty good uh, it's a nice sunday in sweden there you go. It's early morning here in California. Uh, so we'll, the, the day is yet to be decided. You know, uh, super excited to chat with you. We talked a few times over the years. You've got a brand new full length album, The Serpents Here, coming out on Death Spots Records. Really cool experience listening to this record. I always appreciate your solo records the most um, because I think they say a lot about, you know, it's it's all you, mainly when your name's on it. But yeah, what a cool record. Uh, what's the, you know, you work all the time on so much stuff. What was the timeline for writing and recording? this record this was a little bit different because i started uh, recording this during the pandemic so when when i started there were you know there was no deadline or anything i just when i started this i was still finishing like the previous ep all as well so i just figured that you know i had a lot of time on my hands and so i, I just started doing a lot of stuff and i still got pl plenty of stuff that i haven't really finished yet from from those years so but i really wanted to finish this so i worked like in in periods on this album so. nice yeah very good you know when we spoke last we, we were talking about the previous record and you know different how you incorporate different things from all your different projects and your own personal writing style i really say on the serpents here i think it's my my favorite singing of your whole career I think oh, uh, vo vocally it's a fantastic performance and uh, I don't know if uh, you had any new influences in the meantime or it's the same old you know things that uh, make you get on the mic because you know normally you're known for uh, you know being a fine instrumentalist but it's great to hear you sing more um I worked uh, a bit more on the vocals this time um I was it's not that I was wasn't satisfied with the results earlier but I I tried to push myself a little bit more on this uh, album and i think it it needed that because at at least to me it's it's a little bit more of a live rocking feel to the whole album and it's it's a little bit yeah rough around the edges and, and wild uh so but i think the music demanded kind of that i would spend more time on the vocals i think and and i did and i'm very happy with how they came up yeah, great stuff. Uh, I think there's even a little bit of harmony in there somewhere where you uh, doubled yourself once or twice. But yeah, fantastic job. Uh, lyrics, you know, as usual, very mysterious and, and deep sounding. And, uh, you know, we all went through the whole globe. We, as you were saying, went through a whole period of time that was rough. Do you, well, you know, do you write lyrics regularly? Do you just wait for the moment or the song to inspire you? I am very slow when it comes to writing lyrics. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do like it when I start, but it's, you know, it takes, it takes a, it takes a while for me to get to that. I'm, I'm usually very happy about working with, with the music and, and recording and kind of figure out, you know, how the vocals should be in songs. But then when it comes to writing lyrics, it is a little bit of a threshold there <laughs> to, to get over. Um, but I do enjoy it when you get in that mood. Um, I wish I would be quicker with it. Some people seem to have a very, you know, easy, easy way of writing lyrics, you know, so I don't. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, and uh, I know you, you know, working once again with the same kind of team to do the record is that, you know, it's good to have that kind of consistency and be able to choose your partners. Uh, what's what's the chemistry with the other players like and, and the studio process? Because again, we know you can you produce your own records and, yeah, you know, what's that like? It's easy. Um, Tour, uh, the, the guy who plays drums on this album, he played drums on the previous uh, release as well uh, he's a fantastic musician and yeah he's just he just gets it and and he he's very quick when recording but he's also got you know a good creative input but this time and and also there's a there's a friend of mine uh, michael tuominen who plays bass on this, this album um, and he he has been playing with me when 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 i played live gigs as well so easy easy choice a great guy and overall a, a good musician as well 
and both Tor and Michael are used to the free form and improv situations, which was important when we recorded the basic tracks for this album because I didn't want to. I, I wanted it to be very loose when we when we did those, and then I had to adapt afterwards when I added keyboards, guitars, and, and vocals instead of the other way around. Nice. It's good to keep yourself on your own toes to to stay sharp yeah. and, and get better. Right? Yeah, was, you you want to improve even at your level. I think you know everybody want if you care, you want to get better. Yeah, that's the whole idea, I guess, to see and to you know tackle things from different angles. Um, because you you you're gonna learn something new every time you step out of your comfort zone. It doesn't have to be like a, a big thing every time, but as soon as you do something a little bit different, you'll pick up on things as you go along, which will be useful. Uh, yeah. Life is hard, everybody. Life is hard. Uh, but yeah. you know what? You know what's also great is I, again. I know you said the lyrics come hard to you, but I, you know, I know you come from the same generation I do when it comes to listening to whole albums. And you know, you never, you never turned off a Pink Floyd album, or you didn't. You know, I'm gonna shut the turntable off and run out the door during 2112. So I like that it's a complete piece of music. I listened to it multiple times. I was like, this is great. You know, just in its own, like instrumentally, without the vocal, the vocals and lyrics, and I love the vocals, but the instrument are just so seamless yeah yeah I, I certainly think of it like as an album especially when when i wrote the lyrics as well that everything is sort of um lead one one song leads to the other when it comes to the lyrics and they're all based upon the previous uh, release as well but that was never the intention really it, it just happened when i started to write and it was like i never thought that yeah this is going to be a trilogy of you know, like a grand trilogy of uh, of albums or whatever. It just happened that way because I just started to write and then I just thought, well, this is pretty much based on the same stuff as the previous one and the first one as well. So I'm just going to go with it. And But this is definitely the, the, the last part of a very loose... <laughs> Well done. Thank you. Uh, again, I'm excited for many people to hear this thing. It's so good. And you know, like I said, easily my favorite of your solo stuff. Just so great. And, you know, another thing I always think of is uh, guitarists. I don't know if you save up riffs for a period of time and then, oh, this will be on... This will maybe work on the next record. Do you write kind of on the spot guitar uh, guitar stuff? Because I feel like everybody has like, oh, I didn't use that one or two songs. I'll put them on this one. A little bit. I think I I'm my what would you call it my riff bank was was bigger before than it is now and and with this album since i i really set out to do it completely the opposite of how i did the two first albums uh which when when i did those i recorded everything um all music and all vocals and added drums so i just wanted to do it completely the opposite and and just record tracks on very rough song ideas that I, I didn't say so much to Michael and Tora. It was more about, yeah, we, we're going to we're gonna be here. We're going to play this for a while. And then we're going to go to this place. And I also played bass. So there's actually two bass guitars all through the album because I didn't want to have too many, you know, too many instruments with, with big chords or that could be too me melodic because then I find that you kind of start to think about those things too much and, and start to second guess. This might be the chorus or this might be the verse or whatever. I just told Michael and Tor that just um, play how you feel, you know, don't hold back. Nice. It's good to have that kind of freedom in the studio. And again, like you said, to have that trust and the talent of the guys, uh, you know, it's just fantastic. Uh, like I said, uh, it's a very organic feeling record, even though, like I said, you said the process was different. And I appreciate that you uh, pushed yourself there out of your zone because that's how we that's how we learn to do different things. But uh, yeah, I got to say also really love this artwork. It's it's pretty great. I didn't know if you had a specific inspiration in mind or if you want to talk about the artwork. It's I do I do the artwork myself on on um, on my releases. I've done artwork for lots of bands and stuff that I've been a member of as well through the years. Um, and it's kind of a, like a freelance thing that I do as well. But um, since uh, yeah, the first one had an owl on the front, and the second one a rat, and so I just wanted to continue with the with the animal theme, so to speak, and and 
all of the images are in in certain ways connected with the lyrics. So it's it's very old school thinking, but you know you don't want to have be too uh, what do you call it? You don't want to be you don't want to spell it out too much. Uh, and also this it's it's certainly not the first album cover with a skull and a snake on it. So th- there's a couple of albums like uh, there's a seventies album. Uh, with kind of an obscure German band called Message. Uh, it's an album called From Books and Dreams. And that's one of the cooler like uh, album covers that from, from that era, I think, which has a skull and a snake. So this is a little bit of a homage to that as well. But I wanted to have brighter colors. And so I kind of looked at Born Again for the, the color scheme for this. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I love Born Again. That's one of my favorites, actually. People don't believe yeah. me. I grew up on I listened to that record so much in the 80s. Yeah. Uh, and loved it so much. It was, you know, pretty, pretty terrific. Yeah, man. Uh, can people hire you to do their artwork through your website? Um, I, d- I, don't, I don't have a website for the graphics really uh, like official. But yeah, bring it on. I'm up for anything. <clears throat> right on. You can hire this man. Let's do it. <laughs> I just wanted to do some artwork. Uh, you know, just for our last few questions, you know, this long into your career, uh, any temptation to ever revisit some of your band songs as a solo artist and reinterpret them? That has, um, I've thought about it, but uh, it's no. It, it, I, it would be completely, it would feel totally wrong with um, for me to do that, I think, because then it sort of takes away the whole idea behind the solo thing for, for me at least um maybe it would be you know some of the bands or whatever that i work, did a lot of writing for which wouldn't be very well-known bands i mean i would certainly not play a, a beggar song or i wouldn't play an, an you know opus or switchblade or whatever it is you know uh, that would feel very weird in in my opinion so yeah, i would feel like a a cover band if i would do that it's it's no it is the wrong platform so to speak <laughs> i get it i get it uh you know yeah all due respect just uh ch- checking the temperature i understand why though fully uh yeah yeah, yeah. you know it got you go you, you don't you don't want to go walk backwards you always want to go forwards especially in your when you're doing this with your own voice i just thought maybe it'd be interesting or someone has asked uh what's what else is coming up for you in 2024 that you can share i'm sure you got a lot going on this this going to be I've, I've been um Playing and been in a band called Kamshatka, which was a three-piece uh, kind of riff rock band, more based on 60s, 70s blues rock. But we decided to, to not do that anymore, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, so there will be maybe a few new things um, for me, and I'm certainly going to try to play more of my um, realistically first and foremost be in in at home in Sweden or Scandinavia, possibly something in Europe. It's unfortunately kind of tough to get over to North America. A lot of different reasons, you know, like um, it costs a lot to get over and work visas, etc., etc. takes a long time. It's not that easy, but I do love to tour and play live in North America. So one day, maybe. But first, I have to get going here, I think. And then I've, I've been playing um, shows with um, band for for quite a few years it's it's not a heavy touring band it's more about festivals and one-offs and, and there will be a few shows with them this year as well it, it, as u- usual a, a mixed bag of stuff sorry anything is possible and that's what's great uh you know it's always a, a good time yeah team is you know fantastic we look forward to seeing you know hopefully getting to see them and yeah, touring is hard right now it's hard here for bands to get over there so it's you know it goes yeah, it's equally difficult but uh yeah, yeah hopefully there'll be a festival situation or something i keep waiting for psycho las vegas to come back but I, I think it's quiet again this year and uh you know we have quite a few um desert rock stoner rock type of festivals desert fest is in america now so you never know you never know maybe next no, fall. that's pretty cool we're very lucky. That's a great team of folks over there. I'm a big fan of all the desert fests. And uh, yeah, man, it's always great to talk to you. I'm, uh, you know, it was great to see you. And uh, congratulations. The Serpents Here is out March 15th on Despots Records. Please go pick it up. And Per Wilbur, thanks for coming back. We really appreciate you. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, man, always. Take care. Take care. <laughs>